This is just a quick reminder of file recording or, or audio recording within Pro Tools. Uh, most of this will be covered by Simon and Mark in your studio tutorials, so you should obviously pay attention to that. Um, this is just to remind you of uh, sort of a quick procedural um, issues. So you, I've I've made a, a mono track. I've only got one uh, input channel at the moment, and it's from a microphone, sure microphone, which I'm going to make noises on. Um, and uh, so, so I've just got a mono input. But remember, as always, I have my master track output. I just think that's a, an essential habit to get into if you're working with Pro Tools or indeed any other application. Sorry to labour the point. Um, so really, the, the the procedure is well. I suppose there's a couple of things you could perhaps consider in you know in preparation. Uh, there's a couple of things in setup, most of which you're not really going to need to worry about. Uh, but just to point them out to you, there's hardware and there's disk allocation. So hardware setup. This used to be a lot more complicated than it is now, um, but uh, you now have it tells you what peripherals you've got, which is obviously the Digi002. Um, it also gives you the option of recording in all optical format. Now, if you were doing that, um, you would <coughs> um, you you can you can choose. This is for the optical controls on the back of the 002, um, and you can control you can record in in eight channel format, which is eight dat ADAT or uh, speedif, um, which is for example if you're recording off a mini disc and didn't have a USB input or something. The clock source down here um, is to for um, digital um, reading from one source to another or one one platform to another. Uh, <clears throat> most of the time, you'd need to leave it on internal. But if you were recording from again ADAT or Speedif, then you would need to uh, to choose one of the you know what, whatever format it was because it would need to to, diff to obtain a clock uh, input from that other source to avoid uh, clicking. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in class. Uh, so that's the hardware setup. And then disk allocation, again, this is really not something you're going to need to worry about um, for the most part. The only reason I'm mentioning it is because it is the way that Pro Tools allocates whatever you record onto the disk to the appropriate place. Um, and because you're going to be moving from one studio to another, uh, for example, you might be moving from the courtyard studio into a lab, or you might be moving from the courtyard studio into uh, the project studio and back again. Um, <clears throat> sometimes, sometimes uh, the it gets mixed up as about as to where it needs to store stuff. It doesn't happen very often, but when it does, you'll find that all your audio files that you recorded in a particular session have been stored somewhere else. And then, of course, you back up your stuff, move it somewhere else, and then when you open your session, half the files are missing. So it's a good idea just to check this to make sure that it is going to the right place. If you remember from a couple of videos ago, um, I put my thing on the audio drive in the folder Peter Bachelor 2009, etc. Um, and this is the name, name of the uh, session that I've created. Um, so it's remembered that and it's in the right place, but that's because I made it on this drive. You might find that it puts it tries to put it in a different place. I don't know. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but it's worth checking anyway. Okay, so we'll okay that. <clears throat> Main thing you need to remember is to uh, having to to choose the appropriate input. Um, I said the microphone is connected to the first input of the 002 on the back of the device so if I, uh, I mean I, you'll notice from the interface that there are four mic inputs to reflect the four mic inputs on the back of the uh, 002 I've got it selected at line one if this was a stereo channel you would find that there would be two you'd have mic line one and two uh, as the first line but we're only <coughs> recording to a mono chat track, so just got that. Okay, um, and all you need to do is to arm that track, and then press the record arm up uh, in the transport controls, and that will 
basically puts it into a record pause mode. You will notice hopefully if you make noise into the uh, microphone it should be registering in um, on the track, in fact on both tracks, the master as well, and then as soon as I press play, one, two, three, four, five, woo, uh, it will start to record in. So I can stop that now. Um, <coughs> and it is, um, it's, uh, it's given me a, an audio track, or an audio region, I should say. So I'll turn off record arm, because we don't need that anymore. Um, <coughs> and you'll notice, first of all, if I click on this uh, double arrow, I'll, I'll move the cursor about so that you can see where I'm pointing, at the bottom right hand corner of the edit screen, I open that, and this region list which appears, this contains all the regions that you have recorded in or that you have imported from elsewhere. Uh, you'll see more of this when I import stuff from outside Pro Tools shortly. Um, and this region appears here and you can uh, move that so you've got another version of that in your track. Like that. <coughs> so that's your region list. Um, again, we'll talk more about that in a bit. But if I now go to the audio files, sorry, the audio drive, and find my uh, folder, um, this is the first session I made before. Um, this is the folder, sorry, the, the session I've just made, which I haven't put my initials next to, naughty me. Uh, click on File Record. And you'll notice it's got a load of files in there. This is why I suggested that you make sure that all your stuff goes into your folder. Um, so that, uh, because, you know, again, things get muddled up. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, you'll have an audio files folder. And that is where the, uh, the audio that you've just recorded has been stored. In fact, I recorded some uh, as I was preparing this demo earlier. So in fact, these are irrelevant to what we're talking about right now, so I'll delete them. Um, but this audio 1 underscore 04, you'll notice, corresponds with that. So that is the last thing that we recorded, and any time I record anything else, that will be stored in that audio files folder. Um, remember that Pro Tools operates in terms of session files. The session files themselves are very small. Uh, the audio always is recorded externally, or saved like externally because it could be that it's a bit like if you have if, you, if you're familiar with uh, HTML <coughs> the HTML file itself is very very small the page the web page that you see is very small what the page does is refers to pages uh, sorry pictures and audio and all sorts of other stuff external to that and imports them in uh, so it just refers to them and they display on the page the same thing is true of Pro Tools um, in terms of its audio its audio is, ex is stored externally and then uh, it's kind of referred to from within the session. That means, of course, that you can refer to the same audio file from a number of different sessions. Um, so that's something to remember. Again, it kind of uh, it emphasizes the point I made before about uh, making sure that you, uh, when you do move things from place to place, say from computer to computer, you move the whole lot because you could easily leave audio files behind and then wonder what's happened to them. Uh, so try to be organized in your, uh, in your working methods. So audio files and then fade files, uh, this is something we'll come across later. Um, when you make fade, fades in or crossfades in Pro Tools, uh, it will store uh, data in fade files. There's region groups, and session file backups, and video files, all of which will be stored here. Most of which are not going to be particularly significant to you. The main session file is this one here. Um, and, uh, for example, if you were look, looking to open this from the file itself, you double-click on that and your session would open. Um, I think that's probably it for recording. So it's fairly straightforward. You just need to arm the track um, and... <clears throat> click on the record button up here, it will start to flash, we put it in ready mode if you like, and then click on play in order to actually uh, start it recording properly. <clears throat>